Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. Uh, thank you again to everyone who supports the channel. I really appreciate everything you do. Uh, and please hit the like button and please subscribe if you enjoy the content. So today, I'm gonna to talk about Roy Shaw, legendary underworld figure, legendary fighter, and legend, legend in the prison system, respected in the prison system. So I'm gonna talk about why was Roy such a good unlicensed fighter, and I'll talk about my tactics if I ever had to fight Roy when we were both in our prime. So Roy is, is known mainly for his fights with Lenny McLean. He had three fights with Lenny. Um, the, the main two are the ones he lost. The ones everyone knows him for, he actually lost. The other one that he won is not on video. Roy started unlicensed fighting when he got out of prison after doing 18 years for robbery. He was actually 39 years old when he had his first fight. He had demolished Donny the Bull Adams. Um, which is on video. You can see that you can see the power Roy has just to floor Donnie with one punch. And uh, Roy then went on to fight another couple of fights, and he went on to f then fight Lenny McLean. He actually beat Lenny in the first fight. Um, Lenny was stopped on his feet. I think Lenny didn't train properly uh, and was out of breath and, and didn't have any energy. And Roy was just all over him. Um, now he fought Lenny three times. In between the, the last two fights. Roy fought Ron Stander. Now that's probably Roy's most notable victory because Ron Stander was a, a fully fledged American professional who had fought over 60 professional fights. He'd actually knocked out Ernie Shavers, the legendary Ernie Shavers. So Ron Stander was, was a very, very good opponent for Roy. And uh, he, he may have been past his prime. Uh, Ron Stander may have been ring worn with so many pro fights. He'd actually fought Joe Frazier as well. So he was a very, very good opponent. R Roy Shaw beat Ron Stander in the third round. Now, a lot of people say, yeah, Ron Stander, he had a broken rib and all this, but it's still a good victory to have. I I've fought with a broken rib and you can fight on with a broken rib. So, uh, but a good victory for Roy. Now, then he fought Lenny again twice and it's the two famous victories where Lenny knocks him out, uh, knocks him through the ropes in one and then, and then uh, stops him in the other with a big barrage of punches. Now, that's the only two losses on Roy's record. Roy actually had 11 unlicensed fights and he won nine, eight by knockout. I think Kevin Paddock went a distance in his last fight. So that's, that's a good record. It goes to show Roy's, Roy's power. Uh, so Roy has spoke about some other fighters of that era. He'd actually said he would never, never have fought Cliff Fields because Cliff Fields was too big, too strong. Uh, Cliff was the man who knocked Lenny McLean out twice because Roy was actually a middleweight. He's only five foot eight, five foot nine. So he's actually a middleweight. So for him to be up against these big six foot two, 16, 17, 18 stone men, it shows how tenacious he was and shows how tough he was. He had another fight with Lou Yates and uh, I know Lou Yates says he, it was a premature stoppage and Lou was actually doing very well in the fight. And uh, Lou, Lou gave him a tough fight. Lou was another good fighter from the, that era. Um, going on to Roy's actual fighting ability and fighting style. Because he was short, he was an attack, he was a very aggressive attacking fighter. And he would get in close with his short arms, hit you with body shots, uppercuts, hooks. Uh, very powerful punch as well, as you can see from his record. And he had a great chin as well. If you look at his fights with Lenny, he took literally 30 clean blows on the chin before he went over and, uh, in, in one of the fights. And he, he had the heart of a lion, fearless. Very fit as well. He could do the distance, he could go the distance, which was Lenny McLean's uh, mistake in the first fight. Lenny didn't train properly and uh, came out of breath and then got stopped. So if I ever had to fight Roy, I'm gonna give you my tactics on, on how I would go approach fighting someone like Roy Shaw. So before I discuss my tactics on how I would fight Roy Shaw, I just wanted to say thank you to Gary Shaw and Chatina Shaw uh, for the pictures and information and stuff like that. I've known Gary and Chatina for years, for many, many years. I, in fact, I used to visit Roy when Roy was ill, just before he passed away. Myself and Gary would go and visit him. Uh, sadly, the, the day he actually passed away, me and Gary were due to visit him as well. So, um, and I was lucky enough over the years to have had Roy uh, come to two of my fights in Watford. So we picked Roy up and he came along and watched. Um, I was honored to have him there. And I've always found Roy to be humble, respectful and, and good company. Um, 
So my tactics against Roy, I would, there's two options I, I would choose from. The first option would be to do what Lenny did and pretty much meet fire with fire. And I would fight Roy, I would try and take him out early on. Um, or the other option, which I thought about, would be, because Roy's got such a good chin, I know he got stopped by Lenny, but he has got a good chin. The other option would be, as Roy being a smaller fighter, I'm, I'm a six foot two, 19 stone, I would, there's a possibility I could keep Roy at the end of the jab, double jabs, step back as he comes in, try and catch him with some shots, short uppercuts, because he's a lot smaller. And if he's got such a good chin, people with good chins go to the, go to the body, see if you can hurt him to the body. But there's two options, yeah, try and take him out quick like Lenny did, meet him head on, or keep him at distance, because he's gonna come forward, keep him at distance with your double jabs, jabs, step to the side, move around, and just keep your guard up and watch out for his big body shots and his big hooks and uppercuts. But uh, there's no, I'm not saying I would beat Roy, I'm just saying this is my tactics if I had to fight him. Uh, I've got some other videos coming up, the same thing, analysis of fighters and how I would, how I would fight them, Paul Sykes I've got coming up, I'm going to do one on Lee Duffy and some other big fighters as well, um, just an, analysing their fighting styles and their records, um, so yeah, thank you everyone for watching and I hope you're all well and catch up soon.